So I knew that this meet was a great opportunity to try and break four minutes. Um, and two weeks prior, I had uh, ran a personal best at the time of four minutes and two seconds for the mile at the Villanova Invitational. And I didn't feel like I maximized my potential that day. So I knew that with another couple of weeks of good training, um, that if things were to come together on the day, that it was a possibility to break four minutes. And that's, that's a really special thing for me. You know, my, my coach, Marcus, uh, is from my hometown and my high school coach is also from Cork. And he went to Villanova and as they were both sub four minute milers. So it's always something I've had in the back of my head in trying to continue a legacy of some sort um, to be connected to them with, on that level. Yeah, so I knew that the pacemaker was very solid and that he was going to take us through at the exact pace that he did, um, which was 158 high through just over the halfway mark. So uh, because I knew the field and the quality of the field, I wanted to be um, in the top half of the field and in the top couple, honestly, but ideally not at the front, but if I was, um, I would have went and rolled with that. Um, and it just so happened that after the first 100 meters, I was able to slot into um, uh, excluding the pacemaker uh, second position um, and pretty much stayed there for a lot of the race, which was, um, which was nice because I was able to, to hug the inside rail and uh, stay comfortable without any um, obstacles. So at this point, me and Logan are together and as teammates, you know, it's more inspiring to have a teammate of yours that you train with every day next to you than someone that you don't know that you're competing against. So that was a degree of comfort. Um, and at this moment here, I see the athlete from Tracksmith, I believe, hits the front uh, with two laps to go and it was a very aggressive move and I spotted it immediately, which I was glad of, um, but it was too hard to respond to immediately. So I knew I had to make up the ground over time. Um, so it was st I still had Logan with me at this point, which was uh, really encouraging and we were moving together and this is at the point where it starts to get a bit blurry. Um, I'd only looked at the clock once throughout the whole race and it was the previous lap. So now like the atmosphere in the stadium was amazing uh, as it always picks up towards the end of the race when a potential sub four is on. So um, I do vaguely remember seeing uh, the athlete in front of me is Cadence Falter and I was feeling like really good so I was coming into it at this point. Um, and even when I was coming into the last, the last bend, I did not realize I was actually winning. I was just wanting to look at the clock. Um, and as you see here, I can, I can see at this point that I knew I was going to do it. Um, and you can see how much it means to me in the celebrations. Um, not only was it a historic milestone for me, but um, it was also a very emotional day because my grandmother, who passed away from cancer uh, last summer, it was her first birthday since uh, that very day. And I actually had her name written on my spikes. So that definitely played into the emotions of the celebrations. Uh, for me, that was honestly a moment of realization uh, and even seeing 358, because I wasn't sure. I did not know it was 358. I knew it was under four, but I did not think it was 58.9. Um, so that was... Um, and I, the icing on top of the cake, you might say. Uh, and you, as you can see, I'm kissing the medal there, which is for my grandmother. But um, yeah, I mean, I knew when I crossed the line, but I mean, it takes a couple of seconds. It takes more than a couple of seconds for the, the whole uh, achievement to uh, sink in. So that was a very special day for me. And I hope that there's many ahead in the future for both me and my teammates.